In the next parallel tracks, there are two fireside chats. In track one, the topic of the chat session is technology powering India's health schemes, AB, PMJAY and NDHM between RS Sharma, CEO, National Health Authority of India with T. Radhakrishna, editor, South ET Government. And the topic of track two is reimagining startups and SMBs for Atmanirbhar Bharat. This chat session is between Omkar Rai, Director General, Software Technology, Parks of India, MIT, Government of India, and Mohammad Ujale, Senior Special Correspondent, ET Government. Over to you, gentlemen. Hello and welcome to ET Government National Governance Virtual Summit. In this special fireside chat discussion, we are going to focus on the role of startups and small and medium businesses in making India Atm Nirva. We will also try to explore as to how next generation technology such as AI, ML, blockchain and robotics can play a defining role in building resilient digital India. To lead the discussion, I am joined by Mr. Omkar Rai. Mr. Rai is a distinguished alumni of prestigious Banaras Hindu University. He is somebody who has worked tirelessly over the last one decade to proliferate information technology across the country, especially in tier 2 and tier 3 cities. Mr. Rai is currently serving as the Director General of Software Technology Parks of India. Mr. Rai, thank you for your time and welcome to the Fireside Chat discussion. Let me begin by asking you, Mr. Rai, uh, what we have observed during the pandemic that uh, whatever the government department had uh, has a kind of technology uh, platform, they were able to use quite well and that helped uh, most of the government department in mitigating the challenge of pandemic. In that light, I would like to understand from you, how do you look at digital India in post-COVID world? I mean, what kind of element that digital India is going to have based on the experience that we have observed over the last one year during the pandemic? Mr. Rai. Yeah, very well. In fact, uh, during COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, lockdown, uh, as you have rightly pointed out that uh, the government of India, the other uh, uh, governments like state governments, all of us work together to make uh, things better for the businesses, to for uh, allowing them to have a business continuity and uh, to continue uh, to perform and serve and deliver the services that they have been doing in the past. And that actually uh, enabled the uh, emergence of new uh, norms. You know, the businesses quickly uh, resorted to you know, digital platforms, collaborative platforms, work from home, and uh, the kind of uh, infrastructure that India had fortunately in the past. We had a uh, OFC network, we had a very good digital communication infrastructure all across with the participation of private sector and government sector both. And that actually came handy in terms of, uh, you know, starting to the continuity and in, term to, in terms of, you know, exhibiting resilience in our businesses. We all know that uh, the IT industry of India, which had uh, clients to serve from all across the country, all across the world. In fact, uh, very quickly we started to work from home culture, owing to the fact that they had, uh, you know, privacy infrastructure in place, security infrastructure in place, and uh, software technology parks of India, Department of Telecommunication. Both uh, these organizations actually uh, came up with, you know, relaxation in the norms and allowed them to work, uh, uh, continue their businesses in, in a new regime, which was so relaxed. And this has actually, um, owing to the relaxation of the government, uh, the kind of infrastructure, digital communication infrastructure that they, we had in place. And also the kind of e-commerce fleet that was so uh, sound in our country. We could uh, not only serve our businesses, but we could also continue uh, to serve our uh, countrymen in terms of, uh, you know, day-to-day uh, -day requirement of uh, the large population of India. Absolutely. I completely understand uh, with the fact that uh, despite the heavy challenge, the country was able to pull out and technology uh, came as a great savior. Uh, but I would like to uh, go to the second point, Mr. Rai. What we observed during the pandemic also that uh, especially the tier two, tier three cities, where we had the less penetration of technology, they actually, uh, you know, suffer a bit during the reverse migration process. Uh, since STPI has been working quite hard 
over the last two decades to take IT to the tier two and tier three cities. And there are a large number of, you know, technology centers that you have opened. Uh, so I would like to understand from you how STPI is looking at, uh, you know, from IT perspective, a smaller cities like Patna, like it, uh, Itanagar, I mean, uh, like Bhuneshwar. I mean, in Odisha, I know you uh, from away from Bhuneshwar, you have gone to some other places also. So if you could share your views on that. First of all, I must say that uh, STPI was very conscious of uh, these these aspects of uh, proliferation of IT industry, dispersal of IT industry behind the door. And uh, keeping this in uh, mind, keeping this in view, uh, we have about 53 centers uh, out of 60 centers that we have in tier two and tier three centers. So, so we are totally present uh, present all across the country. This was uh, with a view to you know create a nucleating effect so that uh, the industry could also come up in those places. And uh, secondly, that uh, we came up with the India BPO promotion scheme way back few years before to proliferate, disperse uh, by way of incentivization the BPO industry to smaller towns. And that scheme has become very successful. It has been able to create a lot of footprint of industry in smaller towns. That right. is so, you know, it has quickly started a kind of dispersal process, uh, which has given a lot of confidence to the industry. I said that they can operate in smaller towns without any problem. They would get a lot of talent and all those infrastructure requirements that they have. Apart from that, uh, the dispersal of industry, BP industry in smaller towns has also led to a different work culture in uh, smaller towns. Right. And it has also created talent pool in those places uh, because of the kind of soft skill and other uh, other trainings that they had to impart to their employees. And that has actually created a new environment. As far as uh, uh, other aspects are concerned, I must say that uh, we also came up with next generation incubation scheme, which is uh, a scheme to promote the startup uh, startups in smaller towns of this country. Right. And this, then again, this next generation incubation is specially designed to create uh, infrastructure, to create enabling environment, to, to, to create an entire ecosystem where young boys and girls of smaller towns can access avail all those facilities, services, which are available to their peers in tier one city. Right. Therefore, uh, we are very uh, careful about this. We knew uh, beforehand before even pandemic lockdown that uh, this social of industry is very necessary. Apart from that, we also envisage that uh, the young boys and girls of smaller towns have talent in hand. Absolutely. And in case they are provided with infrastructure support, policy support, and other supports, they can also try their hands on creation of uh, uh, technology products, uh, setting out with startups, uh, as uh, the young boys and girls of tier right. one cities are doing. And therefore, uh, but apart from the effort that we are making, other stakeholders are also trying to make sure that uh, we Absolutely. also uh, don't promote migration right. uh, from smaller towns to metro. And right. therefore, it is must for us to create a similar infrastructure, similar Absolutely. services, which are available in tier one cities. Yes, yes, you are absolutely right. I mean, we have to create some level of job opportunities and infrastructure uh, in our different cities, and that will actually help us uh, to move down people right there. I'll move to the other aspect wherein, wherein we are observing that, you know, there is a huge focus of Prime Minister on uh, making self-reliance India under the Atm Nirbhar Bharat, various initiatives is being taken. Technology happens to be a very integral part of entire scheme of things for making India Atm Nirbhar. How do you look the role of a startup and especially a small and medium businesses, which happens to be a large chunk? I mean, large section of India societies fall under the SMBs. I mean, large chunk of the businesses. How do you look at their role in India's uh, trust with the uh, Atam Nirvar Bharat. In fact, uh, very well that uh, you pointed out that uh, we have to become Atam Nirvar, we have to become vocal for local. This was the call uh, made by Honorable Prime Minister of India. People at large, stakeholders at large in this nation realized during uh, this COVID-19 uh, uh, lockdown that we just cannot depend on the you know other geographies for our requirement. And therefore, we have to be uh, self-reliant in terms of meeting our requirement. 
no other geography can uh, can um, meet your requirement to move lot of goods and supplies to your geography in case there are such uh, um, you know calamities or disaster or uh, any anything caused by anything uh, which uh, leads to such kind of impasse and lockdown and therefore we understood the importance of atmanir uh, coming ba- back to the kind of question you asked i i firmly believe that uh, the larger corporations maintain a kind of uh, very uh, a marginal growth year on year and they focus on uh, moving a huge organizations and therefore uh, the creation of uh, working with the new ideas in innovating creates, creating technology products taking the risk of uh, doing things out of box is left to the smes and startups anywhere in the world you will find this phenomena absolutely in place that uh, new technologies are created by young boys and girls who are not uh, not by the larger corporations and therefore uh, while india if i talk about india's history india's journey uh, towards atmir bharat i would say that we have come up uh, come to certain level certain uh, certain successes but in case we want to disrupt these uh, achievements we want to you know quickly achieve a self reliance atmir bharat the major role has to be played by the startups and right. by the smaller uh, businesses we know that uh, the smes uh, maintain a very high level of growth of average 10% year on year which is not recorded by bigger larger corporation larger company right. uh, apart from that the disruptive uh, uh, business disruptive wealth can only be created by startups because of the the risk that they take because of the experiment that they do because of the idea they work on and therefore uh, when we are uh, Uh, we are aspiring to become self reliant the major role has to be played by the startups primarily and then by the smaller and medium businesses and uh, i must uh, inform i must say that uh, the entire uh, infrastructure whether it be policy infrastructure with the uh, financial support infrastructure or enabling environment that is required to fast track the growth by these entities is already in place uh, we have done growth in terms of uh, rising on the business is a big business index and therefore uh, governments at large stakeholders are working in tandem to to make the things better for them so that they can you know, try their hands on new new ideas and this is right. uh, the growth that we require right 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 mr rai down the line what are going to be the key technology focus for stpi because we understand that stpi takes lot of uh, you know efforts uh, in proliferating uh, technology in different parts of the country and uh, i think in last 2 uh, 3 year there has been huge focus on next generation technology and there were a lot of uh, uh, excellent center was set up for ai for uh, blockchain for robotics in different parts and some of the premium institute across the country so would you like to share the, some of the initiative that you are going to take in uh, next one year first of all i would say that uh, we are very again i would say that we are very conscious about these uh, upcoming technologies are emerging technology in next generation technology and therefore we also understand that india being the it sector superpower having uh, uh, enough talent who are actually trying their hands on these technologies in india uh, we believed that uh, we could uh, you know create uh, a collaborative platform where it industry leaders mentors working in these uh, it industries uh, of india and the young boys and girls who are trying to you know ideate uh, or uh, who are trying to indulge in technology creation we are trying to bring all of them uh, through a collaboration uh, initiative which we call centers of excellence right. as you said uh, it's a now matter of common knowledge that we are uh, you know working on technology like uh, artificial intelligence machine learning data analytics internet of things blockchain um, augmented reality virtual reality animation visual effect immersive technologies and such other technologies which are next generation technologies where young boys and girls can you know work with and uh, create you know convert their ideas into prototype and technology product other hand we have also uh, focused on uh, creation of center of excellence uh, focused on the de- de- domains like fintech medtech autonomous connected electric and share vehicle uh, gaming technology and such other technology so we on one hand we are trying to you know uh, to 
create the center of excellence of which are technology focused and other end we are trying to create a uh, center of excellence which are domain focused right and uh, we are creating an umbrella a kind of communication layer over and above these center of excellence so right. that the, the young boys and girls working in their peers could talk to each other they can learn from each other and they can access the kind of infrastructure laboratories and other things we are developing at each and every coe these coes which we are uh, we have already established 13 centers of excellence are uh, essentially incubators right are working very uh, independently to become a knowledge center uh, we are trying to create the knowledge uh, which uh, disseminate across the uh, across the country we are trying to create best practices in that domain so we are working on technologies right. generation of knowledge nurturing the startups bringing right. a large number of mentor pool providing uh, creating uh, creating uh, facilities opportunity for access to capital access to funding and again access to market best practices right. that are uh, happening all across the world and therefore our centers of excellence are so networked so future looking and so industry led right most importantly i must say that our centers of excellence are not working in isolation right. they are being led administered and governed by the industry hands right. so software technology parks of india is only creating this collaboration bringing these stakeholders together and allowing a very business like uh, management administration and governance of these infrastructure that we are putting in place i completely agree with you we need to create an enabling environment for our young startups and smbs so that they can have access to market can have access to capital and can have access to innovative platform and innovation mr prai thank you so much for sharing your views on the role of startups and small medium business in making india atmanirbhar and also thank you for uh, explaining as to how next generation technology such as uh, artificial intelligence machine learning blockchain robotics immersive technology can play a very important and defining role in india's digital journey thank you so much for your time sir thank you so thank much thank you very much thank you panelists for sharing your vast knowledge let's proceed to the expo area as we'll take a short networking break <laughs>